Hey guys, RC here, back with Starter's Order 7, Episode 5. So last episode we had some technical issues with uh, the game not wanting to load. Uh, I did say in that episode I was going to record this right on the heels, which I am. So I uh, have not posted that video, that won't go, go up for a few days. But uh, I will be looking forward to seeing any comments on there. And uh, anyway, let's get to it today. So there were no races for our filly to enter except for selling races. We're not going to do that to her. O'Callahan Strand is entered in a selling race down in Louisiana. And then Al Haban is on his way to South Africa uh, to see if he can win a conditions race out there. So April 3rd, let's get to there. And this will be O'Callahan Strand in what could be his final race for our farm. Uh, let's see. Cherry D. Well, a lot of four of the five. So I'm going to put a couple of heavy bets on Cherry. And wow. Finishes fourth. Okay. That's bad. 118,000 just down the shitter. Uh, run, Rabbit, run. And he's got a second place finish. All right, we'll put a single bet on him. And he does win, so we pick up 50,000 there. So we offset uh, one of our losses. So we're only 68,000 in the hole for the day. Thistle down rose, pretty heavily favored. Now these horses have all raced a lot. So there, she's carrying 117, a 50. This, now, this is a pretty low group, and it is a selling race. So, uh, you know what? Let's put some money on her. 17000 No, she loses. Thank you very much. And this is a Class 7 selling race on dirt. O'Callaghan Strand. 36 rating. One of the lowest, in fact, second lowest in the race. Tipsters, none of them like us. Parading well, lean and ready to go. Let's go race. Maybe she'll do a better job. Looks like we're in the middle of the pack here. Got a pretty decent start out with the leader. Settles into that second trailing position. Slides a little over towards the rail. Might have gotten pinched a little bit by Quaishan leader. Go ahead, he jockey slides over to the rail and let him race for a little while. Four furlongs. All right, he's making the move with the lead horses. Two and a half furlongs. So the front horses went off. O'Callaghan Strand went with them. So we're inside the two furlong pole. He's holding steady in third. Looks like Kawaii is fading right behind him. Since shut is right there. They're bringing it in. We're in the final stretch. We are making a run, and he has moved out in front. Can he hold on? Coming up to the wire, charging pack. It got really close there, but we held on for the victory. All right. Maybe we won some money, and maybe somebody will buy that horse. Should have put some dollars on him, but that's okay. Taking a look at the form book. Mid division early, progress and prominent halfway, led inside the final furlong running all out. Nine to one odds. Ridden as a closer, ran a little freely. I enjoyed that ride. The distance was ideal. All right. So let's uh let's get to the end of the racing. And he didn't sell. Or does he go to auction today? No clue. He's up to a 46. Why does he have... Somebody told me this F was related to their breeding fertility. But this is a colt. I guess maybe they could have, you know, performance issues. I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. Um... <laughs> All right. Alhabon's going off next. Uh, let's see. Has anything popped up? Let's move out to 
Monday here. There we are. All right. Has she opened up any more races? So we seem to like the the five and six furlongs. That seems to be the distance. So let's look at a six. All right. The South Africa was the only one that we had plus selling races. And that's all that's still left for her. Uh, O'Callaghan, five and six. More selling races. I mean... I don't know. I don't know what to do with him. Even in the selling race, he ran. It was really close. So, yeah, let's go ahead and try to move him out. Um, you know, that's that's going to be the best we can do. Uh, let's see. Let's go ahead and go to the fifteenth, and then get to race day for Al Haban. So he's by far our best horse, a first and a third. And let's go ahead and get to the track. Do we want to go after any money? Not in that race. All right, we're second in the in the betting. We've got a first and a third. Dr. Flynn has a second. Face the problem is second and fourth. Those two both have slightly higher ratings than we do. And we are even with the other ones. Tipsters? We're getting two votes. Face the problems getting the other one. In the paddock, parading well, lean and ready to go. As is face the problem. No advantage there. I'm gonna go ahead and put uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put two bets, max bets on Al Haban. That moves him up as the favorite now, for whatever that's worth. That's just an owner betting stupidly on his own horse. Is this a right turn? It is a right turn. My horses have not run a right turn yet. That's interesting. He breaks late, settles into the rear, picks up the pace a little bit and settles in with the pack. I find it so odd with the, you know, with the hilly course instead of being flat. I guess it's still a flat track, right? All right, let's get it up. Can we make any move? Still running. Disturbia's way out there. Looks like we're starting to make a move. Number two, Dr. Flynn is there. Sue's Dream is right there with us. We're running fourth. Two furlongs. Coming up on the outside is Face the Problem, making the late run. And he was one of the favorites. Dr. Flynn is in second. Face the problem. Passes him up. Here come all the runners. We're all laying it out. Face the problem. Distur Sue's dream. We're up into third. Can we get to... Whoo, it was close. We might have gotten a second there. Might have gotten a second. Which should win us some money. That's good. All right, how does the form say we looked? Settled towards the rear, ran on. We finished a length back, a quarter length in front of Sue's Dream. All right. Ridden his closure, got the distance well, ground suited perfectly. All right, well, that's that's interesting. Well, they're all split on that race. We'll go ahead and skip the rest of the races today. Don't need that horse. All right, so we got a we you know three times in the money. He's got twenty three thousand one ninety in earnings in three races. So it says you want to try to race these horses at least four times. So let's see. Stamina has not started to move. We've maxed out the potential bar, and we're at sixty five ish, right there. All right. If he had a little bit more cruising speed or extra speed burst, I think he'd be a better horse. But let's see what he's got here. Moving on. Six furlongs. I don't want to sell him. So everything right now is a selling race. All right. And the next sale is April 30th. So we'll move up to that.
We'll go ahead and save the game and go to the auction. Kind of a small group. Kind of a small group. And I'm probably not going to play this as detailed as a lot of you guys do. One, I don't know exactly what I'm doing. Secondly, eh, you know, <laughs> you know, I, I don't try to min-max every game. So we've got a couple of horses in here that have won. Groups, group, that's a group three. So I'm guessing that's a group three. The, the coppers here, that should be a group two. It is. And we actually have a dam that has a, a group two group three wins. All right, so that's a possibility. So the first two, one, two, five, seven, and the last one. Those are the ones I'm kind of interested in, just off of what I'm seeing there. One, two, five, seven, and the last. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and the last one. All right, so we're definitely we're going to go after three of those five, and then I'm going to tack in those. I'm going to pass on the 2.2, .2, 220. Again, I'm not going to talk a lot during the auction, but that way you guys can see. Well, you could see if I could uh, move my uh, face, but you'll have to trust me. Most of the games that I record, that's the best place for my picture on camera. So this game happens to be the worst place. Tell you what, I'll try to move it real quick. <laughs> and I think it resets when I go when I go off the screen like that. It it doesn't take away the bids, but it does reset. So fair enough. But there we go. I've moved over for you. That's the concern I have, the you know, that I have for my subscribers and my viewers. I do appreciate you being here to watch this. There's an ulterior motive. I mean, I want you guys to help me figure out what's going on. You know, give me some comments. Help me fix, you know, streamline my game and get better at it. So then I can actually have a triple crown winner one day because that's the goal. All right, and I think we've got three more to go after here. All right, we'll get this one for 518. I think that's a pretty good price with a 423 reserve. This one will have a 431 reserve. I bid that one three times trying to jump it up fast, and it looks like it might have worked. We'll get the 431 actually cheaper than, oh, wow, this one's, that started off slow. That one may not have sold. I don't know if it would have or not, but we will pick it up. So we should have bought several horses here, all seven that we went after. And let's see. O'Callahan Strand did sell. It's 182000 All right. Good on him. I didn't notice that he sold. That is interesting. All right. So we've, we're going to have two racers this year. Take a look at the breeding barn. We're up to 14 yearlings. We've got some stake winners that have, you know, that have actually been involved in the breeding, right? That's that's good. Bella Montagna, possible? Mm, not really. Just taking a look at some of these. Not seeing anything there. Not seeing anything there. All right, here's a question for you guys. So when I'm looking at this, if the constitution is low, is that a bar I need to be paying a lot of attention to? Or is it mostly your potential and then kind of how these bars look? So, you know, like extra speed and enthusiasm, finishing consistency. If those were like all 75 and you had, say, a 70 to 75 potential, but a constitution like this, would you still run that horse? That would be good information for me to have. I don't think there's any potential there. 
Now we do have the speed. Enthusiasm's low, which that's that's one that I kind of I kind of don't like. Now see, I don't think having a high constitution is a be all end all. Higher than normal cruising burst, almost a seven, you know, around a seventy cr extra speed rating. But again, that lazy factor's in there. Ugh. That's got maybe the best cruising burst I've seen yet in the game on one of the horses that I've owned. That's off camera. Sweetest of peas. I don't see the potential. Colors red. Again, no real potential. That one has some possible potential. Not quite 50%, about 40%. So maybe it gets up to, you know, with a little luck. But again, that enthusiasm's low. I may be just reading too much into that, you know. Uh, the speed here is really bad. Really bad. Yeah, so anyway, it'll be, it'll be good to hear some feedback from you guys on these rating bars. You know, what, what are you looking for when you're looking at horses? Um, you know, because I need to learn better to how to evaluate these. All right, now here's a really good extra speed rating, but low potential. But this might be a horse that in some, some lower races, handicap races, maybe we could do something. Consistency's horrible. Enthusiasm is still bad. Ugh. Blanche Dubois. That's the, hey, that's the girls. yeah the golden girls. This might be the best horse out of the bunch. So we're you know maybe we can get it up to seventy potential with some wins. We've got seventy sixty five speed, good enthusiasm eighty percent, hundred percent consistency. Zero on the finish application though. Ugh. But that might be the horse of the bunch. Oh, right. Hmm. All right. So we are April 30th. Let's go ahead and get to here. And we're still looking at... You know what? I'm going to just leave it open here. So we have a... First and a fifth, class one, grade three, one a class four maiden, the yearling stakes, that's in Singapore, just out of curiosity, no ratings, we might go there with uh, Alhabam, maybe, all right, we do have a class three conditions race, but it doesn't tell me the conditions. Am I the only one that finds that odd? But let's enter her there. And then him. No selling, no selling. You've already entered her. Do I take him here? I mean, it's $100,000. Couldn't hurt. He finished second going overseas in a six furlong. Class one, grade three. He's not a class one horse, but you know what? Let's go for it. Let's go for it. What do we have to lose? It's just fake money. All right, our next yearling is at the end of June. So we've got a lot of racing between now and then. Let's get up to the May race and see how Al Haban does there. All right, we'll get to the day before. Let's check out the head lad. Raring to go. Good. And let's skip to that day. And then go to the track. Aldo. I think I'm going to put some money on Aldo. And Aldo wins. So we pick up 50000 there. Slippers of Spring. We're going to pass on that one. Statute. I'm not even going to try to pronounce that name. Usquabach. 
I know, I said I wasn't going to try. <laughs> Couldn't help myself. Droid. I got to put a hundred bucks on the droid. This is the droid you're looking for. Just, you know, because it's a droid. Love droids. All right. Oh, darn. <laughs> that would have been too funny. Too funny. All right, I'm thinking Beshabar here. Eh. Somebody's on Golden Taurus, but I'm going to go with Beshabar. We're going to put two bets. And Beshabar wins, so we're up to 118,000 on winning for the day. I'm going to skip that race. Tamino? No. Madam Jean? Nope. We're going to stay away from that. All right, come on. Can I bet on that race? Um, second and fifth, a fourth. I'm going to bet Mosita. Four to five? Ah, oh, figures. Figures. Good thing I don't have money and I can really afford to go bet. All right. I'm looking for us. Where are we at? Let's get to our race. There we are, and we are favored. So the Kranji Yearling Stakes class one grade three on turf we're the only one with a with a race and the only one with a rating which means absolutely nothing six to four all right we're gonna put two bets we're prohibitive favorites uh we have four five five of the horses are unfit we're moving well, lean, and raring to go. We're the only horse that's in really good shape for this. So, you know what? I'm going to bet a couple more, just in case. I mean, you know, if we lose, we lose. We'll make it back selling yearlings next year. All right, where are we starting at? From the six gate. All right, so close to the outside here, I guess. No, we're starting on the rail. It didn't look like we were starting on the rail there, fellas. All right, we are in last. That, that doesn't bode well. And we've got horses in front of us. Can we find some room through the field? I don't know. No, nope, we got pinched right there. All right, he's making a run here, but that, that holdup may have cost us. He's charging one and a half furlongs. I think he blew his I think he blew his wad there. One furlong. Does he have anything left? I don't think he does. Into third. Get there. Get there. Nope. He's gonna finish third. Oh, we just lost a boatload of money on that, and we didn't win any money either because it was a relatively small field. No, we did get. Okay, so we got a little winnings, but 66 to 1 horses win. That's pretty horrific, and we just dropped $1.78 million today. We were dropping quarter million dollar bets on our horse there at the end. Al Haban just cost me a lot of money. If I... If I was a man of principle, he would be glue right now, just on principle. But I'm not that callous, and I actually do love animals. So to the glue factory, he will not go. I will just mourn and drink alcohol to drown my sorrows, assuming I have money left to buy alcohol. Ran early. I think that hold up. I think that hold up in, in uh, when he made his push cost us. Struggled for pace. He almost had to stop. So I think we could have done all right there. 41,000 in earnings. Oh, that's that's not us. 33,000 in earnings. 
Four times out of four in the money. You can't be too disappointed in that. Let's look for a seven furlong. Selling race, selling race. Class one, grade three, juvenile championship. We've got some really good horses. I don't think we're that good. We're going to skip going there. I think that's the right call. And we may just have to look at some handicap races, which I'm assuming I haven't seen any. I mean, there are some, but I haven't seen a bunch. Let's see. Anything at the five furlongs? No, nope, just a selling race. I'm wondering if those are just later in the year. Maybe. I have no idea. All right, the next yearling sale is the 29th. Let's go ahead and get to the next race, and that'll be the last race for this episode. So, Clockman Clonrock, one win in two races, $10,000 in earnings. And we are running in New York, and she is not the favorite. She's entered in the third race, a conditions race. I don't know what the condition is. All right, Cotton is pretty heavily favored, seven to four. I'm going to put two bets down and flush some more money out. Appreciate you. All right, so Clonrock is went off at 66 to one, closed to 12 to one. Give me five is the favorite. Give me five, parading well, parading a little lazily. That's great. Uh, let's see, Rajamond. We raced him before, just like last race, I think. But that's the only one I recognize. First and a fourth. First and a second. So we'll put some money down on give me five. Oh, hopefully we can surprise a few people here. Six furlongs on dirt. We are on the inside, on the rail. We got a good break out with the leaders. That is good. Maybe he'll ride her as a uh, front runner this time. All right, neck and neck with Strathacall, holding on to the lead. On the outside, it's the number seven horse, distinctive look. Definitely has a distinctive look. We're running third. One and a half furlongs left to go. I don't know if we've made a push yet. All right, the one furlong pull. He gives it the whip once, twice, three times. Jamie's lady is holding on to that lead by a neck. And we're going to settle for second there. It's not a bad run, though. And we knew she doesn't have she doesn't have extra speed. So, you know, that's that's disappointing. No extra. So there was nothing extra in the tank. Ridden as a closer. I don't know how you wrote it as a closer from the front, but okay. Got the distance well. All right. Well, Let's uh, let's bail out of the auction here, save the races, and let's check. So we, we got another race here. All right, so we've maxed out potential at about 65. Yeah, I don't know. No finish application. I think that's what hurt her in that race. If that horse would have had some finish application, I think... That would have been the difference. All right, Alhaban. Uh, we have first, third, second, and third. So looks like we've been in the money. Two overseas races. So we've done okay there. A little jaded. Average build, normal, a good track. And... Taking a look at the ratings. So we've maxed his potential out as well. 
All right, so he's pretty much maxed out. He is what he is. Now, here's another thing I don't know. I, I've seen Chris. I've seen Chris Ormy say that, you know, you can max this out and maybe push it a little bit, that maybe this could get up to 70 or 75. But what determines that? I have no idea. You know, is that going to be something that happens when he changes to a three-year-old? Or is that something that should happen now if it's going to happen? I don't know. Don't know. But he's running well. He's running well. All right, let's see. So she's up to an 84. He's actually at a 95. That's, I think that's my highest rated horse I've ever had, you know, <laughs> which is pretty sad, but that's all right. All right, so there's eight races at six furlongs. She did okay in a class three. All right, there's our penalty cutoff. So selling race. A zero to ninety handicap, and she's an eighty-four. So maybe I start putting. Okay, so here's some handicaps. The debutante class one. I just don't think she would run well in these class one races. I don't think she would. I think she's proven that. I mean, she finished fifth out of nine in a class one grade three. So I don't think she has that in her. Let's see about entering her in the handicap. Let's do that. Highest rated, so she'll carry the most weight. That's worrying, but that's okay, I suppose. And then he's still looking at six furlong races. How is he bred? Let's, let's take a look at him. <laughs> a mile and three. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. He did jump up. Holy crap. All right. He's almost 25%. All right. So what does that do for us? What does that do for us? Uh, let's see. Inbox. I need to go find my notes here. I ought to write these down somewhere. Uh Chris, there was some feedback that Chris Ormy gave me on a post I had asked him on his, one of his videos. There it is. All right. So we're almost to 25%, right? So at 20%, you can go seven furlong to a mile. You don't want to go over, you don't want to go to one, one or one, two until you're at 55%. All right, but we can go we can go a mile here. All right, so he's he's starting to develop. Did she change any? No. All right, so let's go back to him and let's look at a mile race. It's a selling race, so I'm not interested. 7 furlongs. We do have a handicap race. He's a 95. You know what? Let's go ahead and enter him in that one. It's a little bit longer distance. It is a handicap. So he will be the top horse there rating-wise. That's cool. I didn't notice him pop up after that last race. But that's good. That's good. That means we saw some development in our year two. All right. Well, there's our races set up for next episode, and uh, then we'll see where we go from there. Guys, let me know what you think. How am I doing? What mistakes am I making? What information do I need to know to tweak my thought process? And again, one of the reasons I really talk out loud and explain, it's not just blabbering to hear me talk. It's I want you guys to be in on my thought process when I'm looking at stuff. So then you, especially if you're more experienced, you can help me. But if you're not as experienced or if you're in the same boat as me, you know, then you can evaluate. Am I thinking the same way he is? And, you know, maybe between all three of us, we can help each other out. Appreciate your time. Appreciate your help. Appreciate your patience. I'm going to save and quit the game here in a minute, so I hope it loads up.
Uh, we did talk about that last episode, having some issues. Hopefully that's in the past because I haven't had the problem before. We'll see. But guys, we will see you next episode. Take care. Bye.